reflecting on the fact that this is kind of weird because this might be one of the last times we ever get to do a Halo panel. So uh, we're going to try to make it extra special for everyone. My name's Brian from Bungie. We're going to dive right in. I'd like to just let get on the road here, let our esteemed panelists introduce themselves, and we're going to take you on a magical journey through the development of Reach and uh, save some time at the end for a couple questions. So, Joe, why don't you go ahead and get us started? I'm Joe Tung. I'm the executive producer. Marcus Leto, creative director. I'm Chris Carney, the competitive multiplayer lead. Marty O'Donnell, audio director, composer. Are you done uploading? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Lee Wilson, uh, story and cinematics lead. I'm uh, Niles, and I'm one of the campaign leads. Sage Merrill, I'm the lead sandbox designer. And I'm Lars Bakken, uh, cooperative multiplayer lead. So uh, we thought we'd just take you through a little bit of the, the early days of Reach, uh, the project, and uh, People are just going to jump in and talk. It's going to be a pretty, pretty loose panel. Um, we started working on Reach all the way back in October 2007. Uh, at that point in time, there were just four of us on the team. Uh, we just wrapped up the, the chief story arc in Halo 3, and we knew that we wanted to do a, a sort of standalone chapter in the Halo universe. Um, we spent a ton of time focusing on the planet Reach. It's a great setting, and it became one of the major characters of our game as well. It's a major military site. It's the birthplace to the Spartan program, which is cool. And it's also the setting of the Human Covenant War, one of the biggest battles that ever took place in the Halo fiction. And that kind of setting dovetailed perfectly with our goals of telling uh, a darker story overall, following this group of Spartans on the final days of the planet Reach. We wanted to make sure that this planet felt like a real place, that it was a lived-in place with a real history, a population, and a backstory altogether. It's moody and it's mysterious. It's got lots of foreboding weather. And of course, it's got plenty of epic vistas that are, you know, the classic part of what makes Halo such a great thing. <laughs> Thanks for the sign. <laughs> uh, that's Marty's job. Yeah. All right. We defined, you know, three uh, distinct geographies that we wanted to explore that we, we believed would give uh, players some uh, really awesome places to uh, you know, play through, throughout the campaign. Uh, Boreal was one of them, Badlands and Temperate. In addition, we explored a ton of architectural styles, including this pioneer style, which is the more rustic uh, colony, uh, colony kind of place to live, uh, industrial, hyper-urban, and of course, the Oni style. Welcome. Um, if anyone wants to know what a level looks like day one, that's it. I know. <laughs> awesome. A green pencil, I mean, beautiful. That is the first mission of the game. Um, the main thing we're exploring right here Spoiler. Is, uh... <laughs> yeah, don't read it, because it gives away spoilers, but... Essentially, the goal of this is to understand the scale and general flow of the mission, as well as even things technically, like how big a mission we can actually fit into our beloved engine. But even before that, where this whole process started is uh, with what we call the, I mean, what was the post-it note process of this part? And this is sort of a collage of this room. And the thing to understand here is there's just a general skeleton of the game at the top of the board. And then the post-it notes are cleverly color-coded. So pink was like gameplay moments, like see an elite for the first time. Yellow was more Sage's area, like sandbox, like hey, here's the first time you use the pistol. And then blue was more Lee's area, like story moments, like Holland gives you a briefing, etc. And that's the whole game right there. And so we would 
paste stuff up there, walk through the game, then bring in different groups, they give us feedback, we change it around, and then in the middle of the night, Marcus would sneak in and rearrange everything. <laughs> um, but then, after we, I mean, what was great about this process is after we walked out of the room, and this took maybe a month or two, we actually felt pretty good about the game, I mean, even at this level. So then we go into that whiteboard process, which I just showed you with that level, and then the next thing we did was we started building the game in Studio Max. So we got pretty crazy in Reach and actually built the whole game in Max before we even placed it in the engine. And this is more just to understand scale and sort of major views and spots for encounters. And then we also, uh, Lars will talk about this right now, but we figured out spots where we were going to inject uh, competitive multiplayer spaces and firefight spaces. Right, so we, you know, really early on started looking at the levels as they were coming together in Max, and we would look at different spaces and, and we knew kind of Carney had a good idea of what multiplayer was coming into and what they were going to bring, because the multiplayer, Chris could talk about a little bit, I know we've talked about previously, they kind of start separately and then get interjected, but for, for Firefight it was really kind of the opposite, it was more of a... Uh, we would look at these spaces, say, wow, this is, this is going to be a really cool, fun, hard point to defend. Um, there's a lot of really cool ways for the AI to move about. There's a lot of cover. This is really interesting geometry. It allowed us to look at all the campaign spaces and then uh, handpick what was going to make the most sense. Um, so it was, it was a very fun process. And we, this is actually from InEngine. We, we built these, got these in engine. We're able to just take this big, broad stroke approach to constructing the missions uh, in the, in the, in the uh, roughest form possible, just so we could really play with the levels, we could try ideas out, we could get a really vague, rough sense initially, right off the bat of, you know, overall uh, scale of each mission. And we could uh, change it pretty easily as a result as well. Yeah, and during the mass up phase, I write all the music, so not to... <laughs> not to <laughs> oh, if that were only the truth. <laughs> So just like, just like with the planet itself, uh, we did a lot of early work fleshing out Noble Team. First time we were going to uh, be following a, a group of Spartans, uh, and we wanted to make sure that that Noble Team came across as really fully realized characters. Uh, obviously, visually, we wanted to make sure that Noble Team was uh, every bit as iconic as the Master Chief. Um, so Marcus, I think, is gonna talk a little bit about that. Sure. These are just a few of the early concept explorations that we did to uh, describe a new set of Spartans for, uh, for the Planet Reach and uh, for Noble Team. We have more uh, concept pre-production art in Reach than I think we've got in the entire Halo series up to this point put together. It's crazy. Um, we also explored some early animation tests to see what we could pull off with our characters, what, uh, how we could you know, uh, differentiate them with distinctive flavors uh, to really make them stand out characters for Noble Team, as well as some early uh, storytelling uh, prototypes that uh, Lee will talk about further. Yeah, it was important that, uh, that all our characters felt um, like really believable and instantly recognizable without being stereotypes. Um, the more that we sort of infused these characters with a rich history, um, the more it influenced the, the dialogue that they would speak. And, uh, and also that, that when, it, uh, when you show up as Noble Six, it's, it's far more believable when you sort of experience um, like being a Spartan on a sort of multi-sensory sensory level. Um, if you feel that their stories have, have, have been going on uh, a bit prior to your arrival. Um, yeah, if, you, if, you, if we look at some of the, the faces. Would you say that your goal was to create uh, a Delta Force type team? Uh, a Delta Force type, type thing. Uh, yes, <laughs> I, believe, I believe that's what I like to say. All right. 
Yeah, you might not know this, but back in the early days, uh, we talked about a lot about Magnificent Seven and the Seven Samurai. And yes, originally there were seven Spartans. Originally. Uh, little trivia for you guys: uh, Rosenda and Tom. Yes, we're two of the Spartans that didn't make the cut, unfortunately. When we started off, I was like, I, I, I sat down with the animation department and Lee, and I said, listen, we got to really focus on bringing the character performances up uh, a few more notches from what we've done in the past, because we did a, we did a pretty decent job in the past, but we really needed, with, with Noble Team, to bring these characters to life, to really make their facial animations uh, work very well with the dialogue that they're speaking and to really pull off a performance that was uh, far more believable than anything we've done in the past. So uh, we, we definitely we explored uh, new tech altogether that allowed us to uh, pull this off and capturing actors' facial expressions and mapping that directly onto the, uh, the, the models. Commander? Only the parts that weren't covered in black ink. If the question is how long until the station is back online, two weeks, earliest. This is plasma damage. Every major uplink component is fried. Which is why I'm splicing into the main overland bundle to get you a direct link with Colonel Holland. I... You're trying to save your own ass. And yours. I think I'm the only person in this car who needs to be thinking about my ass. <laughs> Thanks for saving me for like three minutes. Yo. So that, that was some, some uh, there were two uh, uh, experiments we were doing there. First was just to see how the animation would work with the actor actually speaking. And then with the actor in that last part was what we call face over, where the actor is listening and matching some other actress's uh, speech, which was, that was from ODST. And uh, that's, a, that's how we ended up doing it. So we cast with, with actors that we recorded, uh, chose their best takes, put it together, and then uh, uh, did the face-over work here for the scenes that really needed good facial animation. And it gave us the sense of subtlety, too, with the characters, that it was very difficult to pull off with any kind of hand-animated approach. So this uh, certainly was, as Lee mentioned, this is a basis for what we would put on our characters. We'd get this all in the engine, we'd get this functioning, and then we would go in and add that, the subtle tweaks to really polish things up to the, uh, the level of uh, quality that we felt was appropriate for the game. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so we want to bring all the Spartans to life, so upcoming next is a little video, and uh, I decided to wear the same shirt that I had in the video, so no one would be confused. <laughs> uh, so each one of the main characters, you'll uh, see them in the, in the recording booth, and uh, a little music along with it. I'd also just like to point out that Marty's the only one who has a video that features himself. <laughs> It was not on purpose. This is the Northwest. This is a prequel. This is this is something that happened myself. prior to Halo One. It's a story with a lot of gravity and tragedy. It's an inevitable story of the bravery of the people who fought to allow what happened in Halo One to even happen. At three kilometers north, turn right, heading zero five zero. This is a brand new cast of characters. Brand new casting. It's, and it's pronounced Visegrad. Visegrad, okay. We wanted voices that had character in and of themselves, so we looked for actors that had uh, different ethnic back backgrounds that weren't easily uh, placeable. Remember that accident a couple of years back? Colony ship en route to Cygnus, 700 dead. That's Cat. It's fun when you have new characters you can, you can just start from scratch. This is Noble 4 holding the guns. Noble 6 is on the way. We just wanted to have something that each character could have their own uh, identity, and it would come through their voice. Didn't mean anyone survived the Gossi, sir. Mahot, you wish to know. Halot! Hey, what I do best. What I do best. What I do best. Colonel, this is Noble One. There are no rebels. The Covenant are on reach. Oni has requested Team Noble's direct intervention to help secure Sword Base. We're resetting the bar, and we're coming up with new characters and a new planet. Noble 5 will escort the bomb. I need your Saber team to clear the way for boarding. 
Five, stay with the bomb. You are here, Team Noble, to ensure the delivery of this vital data to a secure location. Yeah, yeah, perfect. That was less stressed. Excellent. That was my direction, right? <laughs> In my brain. <laughs> See, I was telepathic. For me, that is actually really exciting because I have a reason to say all new themes, all new motives, all new atmospheres, and that actually inspires me. That does get me up in the morning to come in and sit at the keyboard and say, okay, now what? Keep everything, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have to say that. All right, that's it. Well, with, with Brian, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so it's, uh, that's, that was really exciting for me to be able to uh, work with these guys and get a whole new cast, all new voices, all new music, and uh, we're looking forward to presenting the whole thing to you guys just in uh, about 10 days, right? We uh, have, can we please talk about gameplay yeah, I mean, for a minute? We, we, yeah. we, we established the story, we had the characters, we had the music, and they were feeling pretty good. And we're like, uh, we still need to do gameplay. So, <laughs> um, about a game. Yeah, you know, this. So we're going to show you now, like a, a sort of a little glimpse into the like, first year of how we uh, sort of develop Bungie games uh, from a gameplay perspective. And uh, again, like all the stuff, or well, almost everything we're showing showing you today is. Uh, sort of was originally intended for internal use, and we're just kind of giving you guys an idea about the first year and, and some of the ideas and, and how they all come together. So uh, from a design perspective, like the, the first year largely uh, consists of uh, sort of a, a, a core group of, of the team, the REACH team, that uh, we sort of took whatever we could from previous games and did whatever we can to sort of tape together sort of the uh, core principles of what we wanted to do uh, across uh, reach the reach campaign and uh, what we ended up uh, doing was uh, after about a year when we brought in most of the ODSP team um, to actually make the game uh, we, we sort of presented uh, a video that we put together um, that uh, sort of establishes some of the uh, the, the high points of, of, of the gameplay and the kind of cool thing about this video that I like is you, you can start to get you start to get a glimpse of what final gameplay and missions made with the game but there's also some stuff that for whatever reason didn't didn't make it in and there's all sorts of stories and reasons why that stuff happens but um, it's kind of a cool little video and this again is from like two years ago and this is by no means uh, a preview of the game or anything like that um, it's uh, it was originally meant for internal use, but uh, yeah, here's, uh, here's that video.
You guys aren't allowed to talk about that video, and we'll neither confirm nor deny that it ever existed. You know, it's, it is always kind of, I know, a little bit sad to see things that look awesome that you won't be able to play in Reach, but rest assured, guys have been making Halo for a long time, and uh, only the best stuff does make the cut. Thank you to all of our fans. Uh, we love you guys. So we've got, we've got one more video, uh, and uh, you know, this is our last Halo game. It's a little bittersweet and sad for us at the office right now. Uh, so we put together a video to just sort of express that emotion. That is why the forklift no longer lifts. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you could please vacate the theater in a prompt and orderly manner, we will be clearing the theater entirely for our next panel. Thank you again for showing up at the Bunch of Panel today.